I'm not quite sure what's going to happen in the next few hours. I'm sitting outside Reading Station in Trooper Potts Way, opposite a homewares store called The Range. And I'm hoping to meet the author of the Book of Trespass, Nick Hayes, and at some point to encounter Sam Lee, the folk singer and environmentalist, and a host of Morris dancers. But I've no idea where we're going, and I'm not quite sure why. So I'm hoping they turn up soon and give us a clue. still waiting for something to happen but a lot of people with rather strange looking headdresses have got off the train some of them with flowers in their hair some of them with upstands of twigs and various members of the media are gathering too so there is a sense of anticipation and of confusion and now somebody in a green outfit of what looks like leaves from head to toe is walking towards the station and somebody else with gold paint on her face and a halo I think it must be a halo is coming towards us too and a coach is arriving that is an amazing costume can you describe it for us and how long it took you to make it I had the lower part from my wedding. <laughs> it's a kind of green man outfit covered in green fabric tassels. And I made the headpiece for today, which is more tassels with a goose sitting on top. It's kind of about that old rhyme from during the enclosure rats when they're slowly kicking people off the land, where they talk about how they arrest the man or woman who steals the goose from off the common, but they let the greater villain loose who steals the common from the goose. So I'm the common and the goose today. Absolutely spectacular, but it must be very hot in there, isn't it? Um, so far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I just say hello? I'm Matthew Bannister from Folk on Foot, and I just wanted to ask you about your costumes. Tell me your name, first of all. Hi, I'm Zoe. Hello, uh, Zoe. From Norwich. And, and what are you wearing? I'm wearing a sort of sunburst head dower with and some glitter on my face and this uh, embroidered dress, and it's a sort of show, The Gloaming, which is the golden hour of the day, which is a, a time that I really connect with when I'm in nature, and just to celebrate that. And I think you've got an instrument on your back. I do, yes. It's a tenor ukulele, so I'll be playing along when we mix music today and play with the Morris dancers, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah. Wonderful. And who is this? Hello, I'm Richard. Uh, I live in Dursley. I came from Stroud today. And my headwear is based on Hearn the Hunter. Well, when you say Hearn the Hunter, I mean, these are a fine <laughs> pair of antlers, aren't they? They are, yeah. Well, I... Uh, I made them out of cardboard and then foam and then wrapped them in lots of different types of wool that my wife has just got lying around the house. So utilising pretty much everything I've got in the house and also the foliage around my bowler hat. There's some ivy there, isn't there? An ivy, yeah, I've got bay leaf and ivy, which kind of keep their shape generally, as I've learnt in the past, uh, what to wrap around your head. And I've got a tattered jacket, waistcoat, that I'll be wearing today as well. It's not my usual Morris attire, but I just really kind of went for it today. So you're a Morris dancer when you're not here, yes. in your real life, as it were. That's right, yeah. I dance with Mizzardon Morris, which are just north, there's a village of Mizzardon, just north of Stroud. I've been dancing with them for about three years, although two of those years have been in lockdown, so uh, a little bit of an amateur still, but I just thought I'd definitely uh, want to get involved today. I like to rise when the sun she rises early in the morning. 
and I like to hear them small birds singing merrily upon the mainland. And hurrah for the life of a country boy, and to ramble in the new mown hay. For I like to rise when the sun she rises early in the morning. And I like to hear them small birds singing merrily upon the layland. And hurrah for the life of a country boy, and to ramble in the new mown hay. That was absolutely brilliant. Uh, hello, I'm from the Folk on Foot podcast. Hello. Can I hear those bells jingling? Because I just love to hear the, the sound of the Morris bells. Uh, which Morris troop are we talking to? So we're Bower Street Morris, and we're based in Margate in Kent. Right. And what was that song you were singing? That's Country Life, which is a traditional song, uh, which I heard by the Watersons originally. So, yeah. What got you involved in Morris dancing in the first place? Living in Kent, I used to see lots of folk festivals and things, and there's always Morris dancers, and I used to sit there with a beer and say, I really ought to give that a go. People like me should do it. We love it. Um, I love watching it. I should just do it. And eventually my friends got sick of me saying that and prodded me towards the nearest Morris side. And then 15 years later, here I am. <laughs> and what, what does it mean to be part of a Morris side? Why is it significant to you? It's the most amazing community, not just the team that you're in, but the other Morris teams around the country. We gather, we dance together. It's just so joyful. And, yeah, performing and just keeping something going is just a really wonderful feeling. And do you feel connected to some kind of historic tradition? Yes and no. I think um, we dance very traditional dances that were collected at the turn of the last century and they were last danced in about 1850. And then we've evolved them a bit. And so, yeah, I think there's room for new traditions and there's room for keeping to the what was collected and, yeah, all of it connected. Yeah. Now, this gentleman has a horse and you can perhaps hear it clacking it's a wooden horse tell us about the horse it's made in the style of a hooden horse i've made a few of them in the past and each of them end up having their own sort of characters and i get something really quite malevolent from this one he's, he's not a nice fella and so i thought coming out for a trespass was a good first sort of out in for him you know and is it part of a tradition yeah so uh, the hooden horse specifically is based around sort of Kent in that area, but sort of horses, uh, hobby horses, sort of carnival horses and things like that, usually ones sort of worn around the hips, have been sort of part of mooring troops and just generally folk troops for a very long time. I think the uh, earliest one was um, early medieval Italian, sort of there's old etchings and stuff and paintings of people wearing horses around the waist. And then obviously just the sort of symbolism of the horse in sort of contemporary English folk culture, and I'm sorry, British folk culture. A lot of people are quite familiar with the Mary Fluids in, in Wales. Um, the horse skull has become very popular lately, but to be honest, I prefer the wooden ones because they have a clack to them. Nick Hayes is here, author of the book of Trespass and the Trespass's Companion. That's right, yeah. And you're one of the moving spirits behind today. What's the idea behind what's going on here? First of all, what's amazing is there's so many people have turned up without a sodding clue where we're going or what the theme is. That's the propaganda I'm just uh, handing you. So hopefully, you know, that's a mark, I think, to how much people really want to sort of have their voice heard about access to nature. You know, our whole thing with the Right to Roam campaign is that we're looking... Uh, to increase the Crow Act uh, to, to places where it's actually more relevant for people to go. Uh, we want rivers, we want woodland, and we want green belt. And we're looking to extend that, mainly because the, the areas that we do have access to are often so remote from the people that need them, from the urban population. So there's so many small woodlands or green belt or rivers that actually if people access them responsibly, not only will they be able to get the mental health benefits, the physical health benefits, save the Treasury £8.2 billion, according to NHS Forest, but also, crucially, they'll have the opportunity to fall in love with nature, which I think is the crucial missing aspect of our ability to protect nature from the devastation, you know, the devastation of habitat and, you know, uh, diversity crisis, etc. And, and all the people here seem to have come in the most wonderful costumes. What is it about the link between your campaign to allow more access and these sort of ancient folk symbols? Well, first of all, I'm blown away. But then that is the English commons culture, isn't it? This specific trespass is essentially trying to say, 
to this lord who's in charge of basically working out how much of England the English are allowed access to. Lord who? Uh, Benyon is his name, Richard Benyon. And he's uh, a government undersecret- minister? Yeah, Under Secretary of State in charge of access to nature, basically. And he's also a big landowner? Yeah, he owns 20,000 acres in the UK. 8,000 of them are in Scotland, where they do have the right to roam. However, when he inherited the 12,000 acres that are in England, he also inherited the right to exclude us. And the problem with that is, you know, like this is my home country kind of thing. I grew up swimming the River Pang before I knew I was trespassing. If he's inherited the right to exclude us, then what kind of inheritance do I have as an English person? This is my home too, except I'm just so forced away from it. So in terms of the culture that we're seeing here, when they enclosed the commons, they actually devastated really that kind of diverse, myriad, inclusive, weird, wonderful culture that was Englishness. And now all we're left with, the sort of brand of Englishness, is manor houses, it's Downton Abbey and colonialism. There is something we can be proud of by being English, and it is nothing to do with your DNA or where your grandparents were from. It's rooted in a lived experience and a process and an understanding of the land around us. And we need the rights to have that because, you know, we're here today to claim them back, basically. So what are we going to do? Which, I mean... You wouldn't believe the amount of spreadsheets, Google mailed, like meetings, Zoom shit, all of this kind of stuff that we've had to simply go to it for a walk to sit under an oak tree. And that is literally the sum of what we're doing. But essentially, today, we're, we're going to go out and say what we haven't said throughout this whole campaign so far, because it's too big of an elephant in the room. And it's almost considered rude to express it. The laws that excludes us from England were written by members of parliament who were only allowed into parliament before it was reformed by virtue of their land holdings and by virtue of the land. So of course the system's rigged and for this one day, because I know it's not considered delicate and it's not considered good etiquette to tell the Lord who's in charge of access to nature that he's mugging the English, but today that is what we're here to do. But we're doing it with broad grins and bells on and apples and flapjacks. Oh, yeah, tell me about the apples, because there's a whole trick with an apple, isn't there? If, you, if you're confronted well, by authority, are you I not don't know. This, to... this is a meme that has appeared out of uh, Hugh Warwick's <laughs> philandering at a brilliant festival called Wood Festival. And he just asked me what should we do with a trespasser. And it was Sam Lee, actually, I was walking with. And as we were accosted by a gamekeeper, with, you know, the usual generic machismo, the aggression, the condescension, the kind of uh, expectation for us to concede that we were doing something morally wrong by sitting by a lake, gently, you know. Um, He just pulled out an apple and started munching it. And there was something in that that seemed so unthreatened by the threat that it was almost just extremely symbolic of the kind of movement that we're doing. We're not going to take this anymore, but we're not going to meet fire with fire. We're not going to have that kind of machismo directing our experience of nature. We're going to go, and today we're going to do it in our way, and we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. Nick, I'll let you get on, and you've got a lot to do. Thank you so much. Great to see you. We'll catch up with you later. Nick is a brilliant illustrator, I should say, and he's handed me a rather beautiful pamphlet about today and the words for a song called Poor Old Lord and another one called Awake Awake Sweet England, which he's adorned with some beautiful flowers, bees, insects and shapes and at the top of this pamphlet it says this is the dance of the commons we are the land workers craftspeople herbalists artists folk musicians and dancers of our land we gather here today to dance to play to sing and to speak to celebrate the culture of the commons a heritage of englishness based on inclusivity a heritage that was almost eradicated from england when we were evicted from its countryside and that's the rallying cry that he's uh, putting out for this event today. And then he's just drawn some gorgeous rabbits playing musical instruments, owls, stars, branches. I mean, it's just an, a, a glorious woodcut. Awake, away, sweet England. Sweet England, now away. Unto Now is calling, holy.
I think we're now heading towards a coach. Um. This is like the best, best school trip ever. <laughs> it's certainly like the most eccentric school trip I've ever been on. I wonder if they'll be singing on the bus, I hope so. There are certainly costumes on the bus, headdresses on the bus, so who knows? Singing and dancing may break out. So I'm just going to lean through the seat here and speak to the two people in front. Um, can I ask your names? Yeah, I'm Molly. And my name's Grace. OK, and tell me about your costumes that you brought along today. What, what have you... You've got some lovely flowers in your hair. Um, yeah, I'm wearing some flowers in my hair and I'm wearing a dress that's covered in strawberries. I just felt, uh, you know, something that felt connected to the land. Um, felt um, important. And uh, uh, Molly, you've got, a, you've got some feathers. I have got a feathery mask. It was actually just handed to me just before I got on the bus. It's These, a beautiful bird, bird mask, isn't it? Yeah, with lots of different feathers. I actually couldn't tell you what the feathers are. So tell me there. what brings you here today. Why did you decide to come? I, I'm kind of local from this area. I grew up in this area and the landowner that we're going to trespass on this today is a very kind of prevalent figure for me growing up it's like all the all the land around the village I grew up and all the land all around the village that I now live in it sort of all belongs to him and yeah and not having I remember kind of growing up as a kid and like beautiful woodlands that we used to go and play in and spend loads of time in and then suddenly a fence would go up and that bit of land suddenly wasn't accessible anymore and we had no control over that and seeing kind of trees that I love being cut down for whatever agenda they had and all that kind of stuff so yeah, it's nice to feel like there's ways to sort of take back that power and challenge it a little bit. Oh, hello, Nick's going to make an announcement from the front. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Give yourselves a cheer for... <laughs> so we're, I think, coming towards the estate where the demonstration is going to take place. And the coach has turned down a very narrow lane uh, going between some what look like estate houses and it's slowed down very much but we've been told that we have to get off very quickly and line up very quickly and then march off very quickly led by musicians and morris dancers that's what's going to happen next and just down here to the right of the coach i can see a whole other group of morris dancers practicing under a tree so i think we're going to join up with them There's Sam Lee. Let's go and have a quick word with him. Hello. Oh, Matthew. So your, your hat is beautifully decorated with, with foliage. Which foliage oh, do you recognise? Me, you're in a botanist. Me now. What is it? It's Traveller's Joy. Traveller's Joy. Of course. And uh, what is your part in today's proceedings? Are you going to sing? Uh, I will sing. I will be holding the ceremony. So when we have arrived at our magical place, I'm, uh, I'm going to be ho holding space with the amazing other musicians and speakers and storytellers that we have. It is amazing <laughs> just to see the costumes here, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, there's an, an amazing Wasted on radio, there. really. I know. 
Well, fortunately, we're filming some of it, so we'll put some of it on our social media. But, but there's an extraordinary owl over there. Yes. And I've already spoken to Hearn the Hunter, who's here. No way. Uh, they're, they're, those God. antlers over there are, 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 are I want to get an autograph. The hunter. Exactly. The hunter. <laughs> but why is this so important to you, Sam? Why, why do you think it's such an important thing to take part in? There's a spirit here right now that none of us could expect, which is that sense of joy and excitement and playfulness and a deep recognition of the, the joy of nature that we are doing emphatically with a sense of release from the fence, from the boundaries that say, you cannot go here, this is not yours, you have no right. And it's been a noose around our nation for hundreds of years of depriving people, not just of joy, but of their right to be as what being a citizen is. And I think what we're doing here, for me, this is about enacting a sense of, of rightfulness, free of any of the, the, the shame or the sense of injustice to enact the pleasure of what nature can be when we are allowed, when we have permission. I've understood that you have a thing about eating an apple, which is your way of confronting authority. You've got a little apple core on your badge. <laughs> what do you have to do with an apple when, you, when you're confronted by authority and they ask you to leave their land? Well, the, the, the role of the apple, the powerful symbol of the apple, is still finding itself right now, but it came about in, in a trespass on this very land that we're on when we were wrecking it some months back, that holding an apple and eating it in the face of resistance from the landowner, from the powers of the land, the gamekeeper, the wardens... Eating the apple is the most powerful, non-violent, passive-aggressive, <laughs> dispelling act as a way of like going, I'm going to carry on being human. To eat an apple is to be human, and perhaps slightly sinful in the Bible sense. <laughs> I'm going to indulge in, in the pleasure of the fruits of the land that you are saying I can't get close to. Uh, Sam, we'll let you get on, and we'll no doubt hear your ceremony too. It's fine and beautiful day, the dance of the commons. We're here at the Englefield Estate. Where our good lord, the Minister for the Access of Nature, lives in a home he sat in for many hundreds of years. We're doing a short walk today, we won't be going that far. The gamekeepers have clocked us already. If they try and intervene, just ignore them. The only thing you need to focus on is this fine, beautiful pink flag led by the lovely Nadia, who's in this gorgeous Kingfisher soiree kind of thing. Uh, we've got people who will deal with the gamekeepers, talk to them, whatever. Our job is to have fun, to dance, to celebrate and reconnect with being on the land and being in the commons today. I believe Joe here will be our, our lead person, taking the procession off. Yeah. Thank you. Ceremony. Joe for the music. <laughs> Um, and we're going to be leaving imminently. Yes. Yep. Well done, everyone, for getting here. Sessions wound its way up the drive now, and there is an enormous stately home just ahead of us. Um, and behind us is the church that belongs to that stately home. It's a glorious sunny day and a beautiful sight to see handkerchiefs waved in the air, a double bass being wheeled along, melodions, fiddles, flutes, and all manner of costumes sheep, owls. Hearn the Hunter, green men and women.
John, you're leading the procession here in a, a wonderful outfit. Tell me about your, your outfit. I am a, a deep, ravenous eagle waiting to swoop down on the people that have dispossessed the good people of this country from the land that they once felt connected to. <laughs> and, and what does it feel like to lead this amazing band of people? Uh, deeply surreal, extremely beautiful. Uh, I'm filled with gratitude at the sort of creativity and the wonder and the joy that's here. Uh, we're not here against Richard Bunyan, the Minister for Access. We're here to show what a new English countryside could look like where people are reconnected to the land. And there is a spirit of joy about it, isn't there? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the setting is quite spectacular. Yes, I think so. I mean, this is the setting of the aristocracy. It's the setting of the, the countryside and the high culture, I suppose, of England and the land. The problem is that that culture, in a way, has displaced the popular culture of England, the popular culture of land. And that's partly what this procession here and all its wonder, splendour, diversity, as diverse as the old wildflower meadows that we've lost 97% of. Uh, <laughs> it's about that culture returning uh, and coming back. And, and Nadia, I wonder if I can say hello. You've got the most glorious kingfisher uh, it. I'm glad you've clocked it to Kingfisher because they whiz by so quickly. Yeah, no, because I've the, been very slow today. I should be running faster. No, but you've got the most great blue, yeah. iridescent blue and orange. And, and did you work hard on this, or is it something you had in your wardrobe? I've not, ma- I've not made this. I've done, I've done, I wouldn't know where to begin making it, so I buy my clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to say I made it, but no. Well, no, but I did. It, I did this. I did the, the headdress. headdress. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Is there going to be a bit of dancing now, do you think? There will be a bit of dancing, yeah. And it's your job to lead us. Where are you going to lead us next? We're going to go take the oak. There is a magnificent oak that we're going to go sit under because is it not the most normal thing in the world on a hot day to find a large tree to rest your head? Which is what we'll do. Thank you. Nick, can I yes, just sir. ask you about your costume and your outfit? Because of you're course, now do. carrying a bell infested, bell, bell <laughs> bestrewn. Uh, adorned. Adorned, <laughs> that's the word. Infested. <laughs> Someone here has had enough of the Morris bells. <laughs> what is that you're carrying in your, in your left hand? The truth is, I don't really know. I started off trying to do a kind of big green man kind of mask, but as you can see, I've got a slight obsession with gold. You've got gold lame trousers on. Yeah, is this what actual lame is? I always say gold lame. That's lame, is it? I think so. And then you've got a gold reindeer hat. Not reindeer, this would be a stag. This is... Me trying to be Hearn the Hunter, essentially. Oh, the, uh, you've got like competition old... back in the in the queue I there. Do, There's somebody with else. The wall lined, yeah, but uh, <laughs> I I don't see that as competition. I see it's so nice that those old stories that no one really knows about in England. It's nice to come together with people that know them, you know, and and that they're actually alive. And the spirit of Hearn the Hunter is essentially someone that was connected to the land, uh, who ended up being ostracised. Uh, by the king's gamekeepers and then he leads the wild hunts and the wild hunts essentially is the kind of people that have been ostracized by the system whether it's migrants or people that have had in the olden days they used to be people criminals with their hands cut off or their necks crutched around a real sort of macabre grotesque image but my reading of it today is that it's very simply those that have been othered by a system that doesn't allow them onto land and so you know (laughs) this is what we do we dress up as the spirit that most gives us the power that we find in life and i guess the point we're making today is that unless we can have access to england how can we be english you know what does that even mean kind of thing and we've got to be something (laughs) you know and are we about to depart from the path here is that the idea we're about to depart i mean we've been trespassing since we all gathered but this will be uh yeah, this is where we're heading to that beautiful oak tree over there. Across a there. field? Across a field, yeah. And, and do you have sort of principles about the way in which you trespass? Of course, yeah, of course. We should. I should just check yeah. whether we're... Right, guys. Thank you so much. We're now going to go and sit under that gorgeous oak tree over there in the shade, and we're going to do it by accessing it just a little further up there. So it might take a while. If you think that you can cross the fence without damaging it, 
then please feel free. But uh, that's uh, each to your own uh, a small, opinion. Yeah. There's a small style. There is a here. style, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, there's a big open so space. So I reckon... Yes, yeah, so follow us through. Sorry. No, we're talking about your principles of, of trespassing. So as we oh. get over the style, what have we got to be? What, how have we got well, to behave? I tell you what, every single one of our uh, trespassers has followed the Scottish Outdoor Access Code uh, because we actually see that as a code that is responsible. It recognises that people are going to go swimming. It recognises that people want to camp out. But it gives you the information to do it safely. The English Countryside Code is like six bullet points on a PDF that no one downloads. Like, it's a, it's a clown's car of a of an educational document. It's, it's an embarrassment to England. And so normally at the moment, we choose the Scottish Outdoor Countryside Code, but what we will be doing is producing our own Countryside Code. Because actually, what people don't realize is the fact that there is a Countryside Code in the first place was not down to the National Farmers Union or the CLA, who actually actively campaigned against it because they knew it would encourage people towards the countryside. And the CLA is the Country Landowners, Landowners Association. Association. Yeah, sorry. And so it was the Ramblers that actually fought the system to have a countryside code. People thought it would be too didactical, but no, the Ramblers, people that were interested in giving access to the English public, were like, well, let's know at least, let's give some guidance about how to do that responsibly. So in a nutshell, first and foremost, we're talking about putting the ecology first. It's as simple as that. You know, if there's ground nesting birds, if it's kind of March, April time, there's lapwings on the ground, then put your dog on a lead or actually leave your dog at home and don't walk it round here. And we're just coming underneath this oak tree now and some blessed shade. And I think Sam Lee is going to conduct a ceremony under this tree. Can everyone come closer? Come closer, really, let's snuggle in. Make use of the boughs and the shade. What a tree to be under and what company to be with. It is a great privilege to be here with all your smiling faces and your smiling outfits too. I'm uncertain of whether to use that word trespass here because I feel what we're doing is a birthright and an act that we should always have been able to do and once were always able to do and do it like this in community, holding hands with music and dance in celebration. One of the finest ways that we as a species can be present and connect with our cousins and brethren species with nature here. And today we are behaving in a way as we may in future behave, which is with the sense of yes, of permission, of permissiveness to really get close to the land, the land that we are all responsible for looking after. We're forging a new path across burnt soil, across an England, a Britain, these islands, a northern hemisphere, a southern hemisphere, that's being beaten by our own conduct. So this is an act of reconciliation with the land that we are depending on. And we are here to show what looking after the land really can be like. I want to start very simply by asking for permission to be here. And I wonder if firstly, if we can all take a hand, if we're sitting down or standing up, just take our hands and put it to the ground and just dig your fingernails into the soil and yeah also receive from the land that sense of we are here and I just want us to kind of say this chant together soil may we be can we do the may we be soil may, may we be. be I think that was a yes <laughs> Oak tree, may we be. Yeah, good, a yes there too, did you hear it? <laughs> the grasses of this land, may, may we, we be. be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the birds, <laughs> may, may we, we be. be. The deer, may we be. All the herbivores, may we be. The shrews, may, may we be. be. The insects. 
may we be. Humans, may we be. Yes, yes, we may. A song. Awake, awake, sweet England, sweet England, now awake unto the land obediently, and let us all partake, for our future now is calling. All in the sky so clear. So resound, resound, sweet England, for our history is always near. Let us sing unto this living story. Let us sing. This song goes back to the 1600s and it was written when a great earthquake struck London. And St Paul's Cathedral, the spire, collapsed. And it was seen as a sign from God that we were living in sin and not there to worship the Lord above and that we must correct the error of our ways. And this admonishment song about service to Jesus Christ came about. And that song had been sung and was eventually discovered in... Herefordshire by Vaughan Williams, a song collector, and documented as the last rendition ever to be found of this song. This is a rewriting, holding that tune, which you may recognise. Maybe you've, you've heard this tune before. It was reappropriated for a, a certain Christmas carol by Vaughan Williams himself. This is a rewriting of that, that we may go back into service to the land and to listen to the land once again. So, all together, <laughs> awake, away, awake, away, sweet England, sweet England, now away, unto the land obediently, and let us all partake, for our now is calling all in the sky so clear so resound resound sweet England for our history is always near let us sing unto One more time, all together. Awake, away, sweet England, sweet England, now away, unto the land obediently, and let us all partake, for our future now is calling. All in the sky so clear So resound, resound, sweet England For our history is always near Let us sing Unto this living story Um, I'm sitting next to a man here, an all-powerful lawyer barrister been, who set up Lawyers for Nature and is doing a lot of the, um, the amazing work protecting the rights and protecting those who are challenging the laws of this land. This is Paul Powsland. Thank you. Mm. My, one of my favourite parts, and I think the most transformative part of my law degree, was a moment in the first year during land law 
And there was a throwaway comment by the lecturer where he said that trespass in the UK is generally not a criminal offence. It's a civil matter. And he sort of brushed over it. But I, sort of my ears pricked up in an otherwise boring lecture. And I suddenly thought to myself, fuck, I can go like, basically anywhere and they can't stop me. And I think it's the <laughs> thing about law that I most want to communicate to people because most people in England just think that they, they, can't, they can't trespass, that it's somehow the police are going to come, that it's going to be a big, it's gonna be a big deal, they, they're going to end up in court. It's a civil matter. The most he can do is sue you and he's probably not going to. So you can hop that fence, you can go into that wood, you can swim in that river. And if someone just tries to stop you, like either say, OK, I'm going, or get into the river or climb the tree and say, I'll go when I'm ready, because they have to come and get you. So I really, that's one of my favourite things to remember. We are generally in this country still largely free. There's a few exceptions, but just like what we're doing today is not a criminal offence. And actually, that's a great deal of freedom. The Right to Roam campaign obviously looks a lot about the human relationship to land, the way that we humans are being excluded from it. But actually, there's another side to it as well, the way that nature has been excluded and expropriated from our land. As well as stealing all the land for everyone else and enclosing it and keeping us off, one of the most deadly ideas that the English people and the English landowners have come up with is the idea that nature is property as well, that nature is a resource, that nature is dead the nature that so many of us here know is alive and that we are intrinsically part of, that's not the case. It's a dead piece of property to be owned and exploited as they wish. And so when we're bringing about these access campaigns and right to roam, I also crucially want people to remember that we are also fighting for nature's rights as well. For the right of nature to be on the land and to, to live and to flourish. And that actually because nature can't speak, we have to speak and act for it. And so I really urge people in taking this right to roam, in hopping those fences, in not, not staying where they want to keep us anymore, to also act for nature, to see the right to roam as the right to care and love nature, and to see yourself as a guardian for nature. We've some more speakers yet to come, but we've been doing lots of listening and lots of sitting. And we have instruments and bells and drums. And I wonder if we just have a little musical dance break. Yeah. And we just take and we just stand up. And are, is there a band at hand? <laughs> <laughs> quick word with you because yes. you've been keeping the music going with your colleagues here from yep. Sheffield. That's right. Yes. We always like to meet someone from Sheffield. Yep. And you've been <laughs> playing the oboe yes. as, a, as a Morris dancing instrument. That's right, yes. That's quite unusual, isn't it? There's a handful of us. There's not a lot of us. There's a handful of us. Yeah, we're not common, that's for sure. Tell us about your Morris side in Sheffield. So I'm a member of Pexus and Morris. We've celebrated our 21st anniversary this year. I'm one of the founder members, uh, along with Jess Arrowsmith, who I think you met on an earlier photo. From the Melrose, from the Melrose Quartet. Quartet. That's yes, right, yeah. yeah. And we formed the side as a small group of friends back in the day, before we had any children, before we had any additional responsibilities, apart from just a group of friends that wanted to get together and do some Cotswold Morris dancing, because it's something that we had in common, something that we wanted to do 
so you could say that Sheffield's the most northerly of the Cotswold villages. But yeah, <laughs> so we've got the Cotswold Bit of cultural dancing. appropriation. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and, and what about today? How, how has today gone from your point of view, and how did you feel about it yeah, as, as you experienced? I'm very it? nervous. Um, I'm not someone that usually gets involved with activism, although I'm very interested in it. I like to follow it, but I've never been to an event like this before. Yeah. Um, did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, I have enjoyed myself. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. A lot of pleasure. As you came here, were you kind of slightly worried that you were going to be arrested and have your reputation trashed? Um, there, there was that element, but I trust Nick. You know, the correspondence I've had with Nick has been very reassuring, and the fact that, like, we heard from a lawyer earlier talking about our rights and and, and the, the fact that trespass is not a crime. It's, it's not a, civil, a crime, a absolutely. Yeah. Matter. So I felt like I'm not doing anything that I wouldn't do other places. There was no intent to cause any harm, so why wouldn't I? You know. So I've really enjoyed it. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here today and to share this time. You know, the, the Morris world, we, we know quite a lot of each other, but I feel like today I've met all sorts of interesting different characters from different walks of life. I've heard lots of different ideas from different places. So personally, I feel like I've got a lot out of it. Yeah. And that's what today has done for me. Yeah. Today has just lifted my heart. I was yeah. feeling a bit depressed this morning when I came out, despite the sunshine. Yeah. And the sense of community and the sense of joy that people have radiated here has just been a, a real tonic, hasn't it? Oh, it really has, yeah. And what an amazing day we've had for it. One group of people that we haven't yet heard from, and that is the team who are doing the Right to Roam movement, keeping it going, lighting the fire, inspiring us all and bringing us together. And I'm absolutely thrilled to ask for Nadia to come and say a few words oh, yeah. to end today. Please, a huge Woo! cheer. <laughs> I heard Sam Lee ask, the birds, if we can be. What was it you said? What were the words you May used? May we be. May we be. And the first thing I thought was, where are the birds? Yeah. And you asked the insects, may we be? And I wondered where, where's that hum? You know that, have you been somewhere with that hum? Mm -hmm. And it's just insects. And then you asked us to dig our hands into the soil and I couldn't because it's too dry. Mm -hmm. And then I wondered why it was so dry. And then listening to Paul talk about being in the land and watching it so you can see where something's not going right. And when you don't see it, how do you see that it's not going right? And how do you see for the first year that the grasshopper warbler didn't return? Mm. Sorry. Mm. And, um, and I've been a nature conservationist for many years now and what's been taught to me is that I shouldn't trust any of you because you'll set fires, you'll pick flowers, you'll litter, you don't know what you're talking about, you don't have an ecological knowledge as good as me so you're not really to be trusted if I'm honest with the responsibility that comes with land but fuck me I trust all of you <laughs> <laughs> to be, guardians is not quite the word but to belong and know what to do intuitively because we know what to do intuitively in the absence of scientific name for things in the absence of conservation practice you'll intuitively know how to be in the land mm -hmm. and also I'm not a port or anything like that and like I was like oh god I can't talk I think I said to you and you I can't talk and then I was just like no because places like this everyone would have had their voice and their sense of place and weirdness I can't believe this weekend I've sang and danced because <laughs> I get really embarrassed about that kind of stuff 
but the places like this hold people in that way that you can just be. But then we're here now and then we're not here tomorrow. <laughs> and so I think it's in the repetition of being in these places, the repetition of it just being the normal thing that we do. We then protect the vulnerable. We make the weird. We learn that the blackbird's not in that tree anymore. Or we see the flowers wilting and we know they need water. So it's in the repetition and you can only have repetition if you have access. Access in every form. So a sense that you can be here safely and you can come and go. Physical access so you can get to places. Access to know that you're welcome. Is it not as simple as that? That's all we want. It's just to be able to gather repeatedly again and do the same thing again and again and again. With the seasons, with the days, with the hours, just keep doing this under oak trees. And as a parting shot, the Morris dancers are now performing directly in front of the stately home here on the estate, a blast of colour against the looming windows of the huge building before they make their way home. And we've been making a film today and we're going to make that film available to our patrons, our heroes, those who make a small contribution every month to keep this podcast on the road. And if you'd like to see it, all you have to do is go to folkonfoot.com and click on the Support Us button. We rely entirely on the support from viewers and listeners to keep going. So please support us if you can. And please think carefully about supporting the right to roam. <laughs>